This is Gail Eichenthal once again, welcoming you back to the final program in a four-part series of concerts by Sinfonia San Francisco. On this concluding portion of our program, we'll hear a single work, The Soldier's Tale by Igor Stravinsky. With war still raging across Europe and the revolution wreaking havoc in Russia, both Stravinsky and his Swiss friend Charles Ramuz found themselves in desperate financial straits by 1918. To remedy their plight, they decided to collaborate on a shoestring budget theater production that could travel from village to village throughout Switzerland. A novelist, Ramuz suggested they produce a story rather than a full-fledged play, a kind of acted narration. For his part, Stravinsky came up with the idea for an economical but inspired seven-member orchestra, which still managed to encompass the entire range and coloring of every instrumental family, violin and double bass, clarinet and bassoon, cornet and trombone, further spiced by what Stravinsky described as a shop full of percussion instruments. The score itself was an eclectic mix of march style, tango, ragtime, waltz, Lutheran chorales, and Spanish pasodoble overlaid with shifting accents, caustic harmonies, and a generally stringent percussive quality. The Soldier's Tale is a miniature version of the Faust legend, adapted from a collection of Russian folk tales. When we first encounter the soldier, he's trudging down the road back to his village on a 10-day leave. The story follows his adventures as he trades his violin, a symbol of his art, for a red-bound book which supposedly holds the key to wealth and success, in essence, selling his soul to the devil. With helpful hints from the narrator, the soldier manages to outwit the devil several times and even wins the hand of a beautiful princess when he charms her back to health by playing several dances on his violin. But in the end, Satan leads his hapless victim away, accompanied by a diabolical barrage of percussion, this the Devil's Triumphal March, which concludes the piece. The original production called for a narrator, actors, and a dancer. Scott Beach won't be dancing in this performance. However, we will hear this virtuoso, multi-voiced actor portray the narrator and create the ten different characters who populate this colorful theatrical work. He'll join conductor Samuel Chrysler and several members of Sinfonia San Francisco, Roy Milan, violin, Chris Gilbert, double bass, clarinetist Gregory Dufford, bassoonist Rufus Olivier Jr., Glenn Fishthal, trumpet, McDowell Henley, trombone, and Tom Hemphill, percussion. And now, L'Histoire du Soldat, The Soldier's Tale, with text by Charles Ramuz and music by Igor Stravinsky. Where's my St. Joseph? 
He looks in his pack for a lucky medallion he has with the face of his namesake, St. Joseph, engraved on the back. Oh, good. There we are. He starts rummaging, brings up some packages tied with string, brings up cartridges, rummages on. Here's a mirror with most of the silvering gone. Oh, where's her picture? That mustn't be missed. The picture his girlfriend gave him the day he went off to enlist. Ah, here it is. And right in the middle, he brings out an old brown fiddle. Didn't cost much. The tone's not rich. You have to keep screwing it up to pitch. a little old man carrying a butterfly net. Give me your fiddle. No. Sell it to me. No. I'll give you this book for it. I can't read. Makes no difference. There's no need. With this book, you don't have to read. It's more than a book. It's wealth untold. You have only to open it. Lo and behold, banknotes, bearer bonds, and gold. Well, uh, I'll take a look. Certainly, <laughs> certainly. Here's the book. <laughs> On sight, collateral, note of hand. Look here, I can scarcely understand. I mean, I, I can read the words, but it's, it's all Greek to me. Oh, you'll get the hang of it. <laughs> Wait and see. Yes. But look, sir, if it's worth such a lot, it's, it's worth a lot more than this fiddle I've got. So you have a real bargain, huh? Eh? Eh? Well, uh, right then, it's a deal. <laughs> On site, collateral, note of hand, market quotations for Tuesday the 6th. Well, what day is today? It's, it's a Friday. It's Friday the 2nd. What's this? Here's a book that's it's ahead of the date. Strange sort of book. It tells you things before they happen. Come home with me now. What do you say? Well, what's up? <laughs> well, I need lessons. I don't know how to hold the bow. Well, I've only ten days leave, you know. Ah, uh, we can use my carriage and pair. Much, much better than walking, you know. Well, Mother will worry if I'm late. It's not the first time she's had to wait. And my girlfriend expects me to. 
Ah, oh, you'll make it up to her. She'll be all the more pleased when you do. This place of yours, is it abroad? Wine dined, all found, full bed and board, home in a carriage like a lord. Two or three days a step out of your way, and then you'll be rich as the king of Cathay. What sort of uh, grub you got down your way? Steak and the trimmings, three times a day. What's to drink? Champagne de Pernay. Smoking permitted? What do you say to Havana Havana cigars, huh? What do you say? Well, that's it, then. That does the trick. Joseph goes off with old Nick, and he finds that the old boy doesn't cheat. New clothes, soft beds, plenty to eat. Yes, Joseph has properly done up a treat, and each shows the other as they undertook the way of the fiddle and the way of the book. Oh, the old fellow kept his word. Two happy days, and then came the third. That morning, the old man wakes Joseph as soon as it's light and says, Are you ready? And Joseph says, Right. Did you have a good night? Joseph says, Yes. And the devil just smiles as he gets up to dress. Have you any complaints? Joseph says, No. Right, you are, says old Nick. Then off we go. They get in the carriage waiting below, and the devil says, Yep, and off they go. Only Joseph, watching the horse's flying feet, finds himself holding on with both hands to his seat, with all his might till his knuckles are white. Hold on tight, cries the little old man. Hold tight. Joseph would like to get up and jump out, but he hasn't a chance. Take care, cries the devil. See how my horses prance. They lead us a dance. They're taking the air. Take care. And the carriage is suddenly traveling high. High in the air, hurtling, rattling, rolling around the sky, and Joseph's hair stands on end, and he nearly faints. Have you any complaints? Have you any complaints? Higher and higher, over valley and hill, faster and faster, up and up they soar, till time stands still. Then everything is as it was before. <laughs> Hot and dusty road, tramps a soldier with his load. Ten days leave he has to spend. Will his journey never end? Shrieks as every door slams shut. That's funny. 
But mother will know me. I'd better go. She sees me coming. She screams and runs away. And see, there's my fiancé. Say, married with two children. Oh, I've got it now. I know who you are at last. I see what's happened. I know you. Oh, I've taken my time about it, too. It wasn't three days. Three years have passed. They all take me for a ghost. I'm dead among the living. Oh, the cheat, the dirty rock. Oh, like a fool, I went and listened to him. Oh, yes, I know. I was tired and hungry. But that's no reason to go listening to the likes of him. Do you take any notion of what people you don't know tell you? No, you say, I don't know you. But what did I do? I listened to him. Oh, I should have had my suspicions. But no, I listened to him like a fool. I had to go listen to him, and I gave him my fiddle. Of all the luck. Now what am I going to do? What am I going to do now? What am I going to do? is standing there in the marketplace dressed as a cattle merchant. Hey, you dirty cheat! It's you! Well, how do you do? <laughs> you dirty, rotten cheat! Please be a little more discreet! Not try to behave, you hear? Good! Now, what are you going to do, eh? Have you forgotten all I've said? The book I gave you, bound in red? Oh, it sits somewhere in my kit. Then you've got all you need if you've still got it. Aren't you a soldier? Be one, then. Show the ladies and gentlemen. On guard, pick. But that's it. Put up that sword. Break, break. Stow your kit. There we are. Platoon, fall in on the run. Stand at ease. And cut. Platoon, off caps. Yep, yeah. here. Take this one of mine. Yep, 
Not so bad. <laughs> Suits you fine. But now then, take off your tunic, one button the throat. Don't fall out, we'll find you a coat. Don't fall out, we've hardly begun, we're not finished yet. Fetch it, the book, the book, the book, what have you done? Oh, yes, you told me. Well, fetch it then, fetch it, hold me the book. Now, back here again, but be careful. Don't let it come to harm, you'll lose it like that. Put it under your arm. Ah, that book's worth a fortune, a fortune, you see. Hold on tight to it and listen to me. This fiddle's mine here. That book's yours there, each to his own, and so all square. as anyone could need. He used it at first to set right his affairs and then became a peddler, a seller of wares. Step right up, ladies. Come by. See all the lovely colors. Black, navy, pale blue, Prussian blue, pastel, sky blue, beige, chocolate, fawn, dark, gray, 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 green, gray, pale gray, silver gray, russet, maroon, brown, khaki, unbleached, linen by the yard, printed cottons, crepe de chine, silks and satins, pre-war prices. A peddler first, a seller of wares for a start, and he got along fine, he knew all the tricks by heart. Things go the way I make them go. For others only guess, I know. It's, it's more than a book, it's wealth untold. You have only to open it low and behold, oh, you can have all you want, your heart's desire. While you have time, quick, grab all you can. One day you'll be dead, you're only a man. Oh, my old friend, you didn't lie. <laughs> After all, in the end, we've all got to die. First one thing, then another, only a matter of business, this, that, and the other, because I can pay. It's mine. All. He stops. All. Nothing. All. Nothing. Nothing at all. What have I said? What's the matter with me? I, I have everything. Nothing. Now he can see. All you want. All the time, all wealth can provide, they don't mean a thing. They're all empty inside. False things, dead and rotten, you buy and sell. All, nothing, just an empty shell. Oh, to have still the things that you had before. The real, true, good things that everybody has, but you, that you have no more. The only things worth having. Just to stretch out on the grass as you used to do. Good to touch, good to feel. Things that cost nothing, that everyone has, that mean so much. These things are real, things that belong to all the world but you. Saturday evening, weekend plans, watching the people at work in their gardens, so many people with watering cans, little girls playing Red Rover. You smile as you pass over the sun-baked wall, settle down on the grass, someone fills your glass. Things that are warm inside, the only things worth having.
they have nothing, and yet they have it all. And I, who have everything, I have nothing. 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 How can that be? Satan. Satan, you cheated me. What can I do? Does it say in the book? He snatches it up and begins to look. You must know. You must tell me. Tell me how everyone, how all the others are happy. How is it done? You must know. Tell me. Tell me what can I do to have nothing again? The telephone rings. Hello, sir. With regard to your current accounts, that's later. The telephone rings. Later, later, I tell you. The book must know the answer. Answer me. What can I do to be as I used to be? I've been proud and envied, and in my pride, I am dead inside to the world outside. I'm rich, unbelievably rich. But all of it I give to be alive again as others live. I'm a ghost among the living. The soldier throws the book on the floor. The devil pops his head round the door, dressed as an old woman, old and poor, in a silly old hat and mangy fur. Please, kind sir, may I come in? What do you want? Just a few words with you, sir, but before I begin, you'll allow me, you see, to have dropped something, sir. This book, you might... Oh, no, thanks, thanks. What do you want? I'll explain, sir. It's this. I have a little case outside that's full of rare, precious things, sir. I'd be glad... No, thank you, sir. For pity's sake. Oh, dear, take this. Sir, please, we have our pride. Nothing for nothing is the rule. Each has his own little job to do. My case is just outside, so please let me bring it in to you. Now, now, look, look, sir, pick these lovely things. Watches, necklaces, rings, ha, some lace, sir. No, don't be afraid, sir. Don't be afraid to say so. It's true, of course, you haven't a wife. Uh, each has his own little role in life. Uh, a lucky medallion mm, mm, engraved on the back. No, no, every time. Hmm. Now, what do you lack? A mirror, perhaps? No? Oh, dear. Oh, what a shame. A beautiful picture, complete with frame. Ah, that seems to arouse your interest. Is it? No. Still no. Same as the rest. Or would this little fiddle be best? <laughs> How much? How much? I can pay. Well, as we're friends, I won't stand in the way. Try it first. See what you say. We'll fix a price. Let's hear you play. The violin is strange, and still, and dead. He hears music, but only in his head. The devil has disappeared. The soldier hurls the violin away with all his strength. Then he picks up the book and tears it into a thousand pieces. Without his load, someone trudging on and on. Many, many miles he's gone. Over hill and dale he goes. Where's he heading? No one knows. He doesn't know himself. He only knows that he must get out, go somewhere else, because he can't go on the way he was. Nothing remains of all his fine belongings. He's thrown them away. Without a word to say to anyone, he's run off. And things are just as they were, except, of course, he has no pack to bear. Is he taking the homeward road, the one he took before? 
Oh, no, it's not his anymore. Now he goes the other way, cannot stay, on his way, marching, marching all the day. Now he comes to another land, a village on the frontier and an inn. He thinks, shall I cross over? He thinks, why not? He goes to the inn, orders a drink, slugs it down. Yes, now what? He looks around, stares at the white muslin curtains bound with red silk cords stirring in the wind. But what's this? Suddenly, the world outside comes crashing in again. Somebody starts to beat a drum. The herald proclaims that the princess of the realm, the only daughter of the king, lies ill in bed. She neither speaks nor sleeps nor eats nor anything, and the herald declares to the gathered throng that whatsoever man shall come along and raise the poor girl from her bed, that man, the fair princess, shall wed. Just as that moment, a man comes up to Joseph and says, Hello, chum. We've not been introduced, it's true, but, well, I've been a soldier, too. Old comrades don't mind if you make yourself known. When I came in and saw you were alone, I said to myself, have a word with him. Ah, he looks a bit down. I said, you can see at a glance. Go on over. Who knows? This might be his big chance. Lovely young girl. What about it? Princess, too. Think of that. I say, it was made for you. I'm married already. Was luck. It's no use to me. But you know, my lad, you're young, you're free. Doctoring, well, it's whatever you choose. Besides, you know, you've nothing to lose by trying. You go and you say, I'm an Emma. She's good, she's not. It's worth a shot. Why not? After all, why not? Well, thanks, my friend. Many thanks for the tip. He's up, he's off, quick as a whip. Finds his way to the palace gates. He pulls the cord, a regal ring. Where are you going? The sentry says, where am I going? To see the king! He said to me, you are a doctor, 
I said uh, an army doctor, yes. Many have come, you know, but none have stayed. Oh, I have my methods, I said. I'm not dismayed. Very well. Tomorrow you shall see the princess. It went off just as we hoped. That fellow was right. So far, so good. Just think a girl to call your own after so many years alone. The soldier is sitting at a table with a pack of cards. Why not? Why shouldn't the luck be mine? <laughs> I'll ask the cards. What do you say? Six of hearts? Ten of hearts? Queen of hearts? Nothing but hearts trumps all the way. Oh, it's true, why not? Why shouldn't it be to have a wife all for my own? And what's more, a princess too. The devil appears dressed as a virtuoso violinist holding the fiddle. Someone's here ahead of you. <laughs> you were silly to be upset. You were rich and esteemed. You get a little sudden whim. You don't count the cost. And now, my poor young friend, you're lost. <laughs> Six of hearts, ten of hearts, hearts all the way. You told yourself this is my lucky day. Well, do you still believe it's true? I have my methods. I, not you. True what he says. He's got me for sure. He'll do the trick. He's got the cure. I have nothing. Nothing at all. Once more. Go for him just the same. Knock him down and bang his head on the floor. He isn't a man. I can do nothing more. You can. I tell you, you can. Don't you see how it is? He's got you because of the money. You still have money of his. Get rid of that and you're saved. Go on. Begin. Offer to play him at cards. He's sure to win. Uh, will you... Play? I have money. What? I don't understand. I said, would you like a game? Oh, my dear young friend, I'm always ready for a hand. <laughs> You'll win. He always likes to win. You'll lose, and he'll be lost. Begin. Notes, golds, and silver. All in. Good. How much a point? A dime, yes. A, a dollar a point, but not a penny less. Not just as you wish, but you'd best take care. No more fiddle, no more book. Only a few pennies left, and look, the pennies are flying off into the air. You'll have nothing at all. Then where will you be? You'll starve, my friend. S-T-A-R-V-E. <laughs> You'll be ruined. Total defeat. You'll go around naked. No shoes on your feet. Raise him 50. I raise you 50. You're, you're mad. How can you be? A hundred. Deal on. Jeffy, Jeffy, not so fast. I, 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 I've won. Same as the last. Bet all you've got. All I've got. Ace of spades, you've got the four of clubs. It's me. I won again. <laughs> you see, you see, he's going to fall. I said he would. Now listen, get up. Here's what you do. Get him a drink. It'll do him good. Say to him, here's a help to you. Here, here, take this. It'll do you good. Go on, go on, have a drink. Go, say what. Here, here's a help to you again. Again. <laughs> you're, you're very rude. That's not enough. Look out, he's going to fall. I'm free. I'm free. Now do I dare take back the fiddle? Careful. He's not quite finished yet. All right, then. Eight, nine, ten. He's out. Now, take back your fiddle again.
princess. This is your finest day, for he who will cure you is on his way. He's bringing life and hope to you because there's nothing he can't do. He'll cure and claim you as his wife because he too has been brought back to life.
at the fiddle, the soldier plays, and the devil is forced by the music to dance, and dance he has a chance. I shall have to wait, but this realm of yours is not so great. If once its frontier should be passed, then you'll be in my power at last. So do not push your luck too far or then. Then, my lady, you will find that you are back in bed again. As for your prince, he can't pretend he doesn't know my patience now is at an end. He who laughs last, he laughs most. As I shall do to watch him roast. Can 
have it all. That is forbidden. abandons happiness for mere having is a fool. Always will have everything he thinks. But one day, she says, I know so little about you still. Tell me about yourself. Come on, tell me. Well, it all started a long, long time ago. There was a cottage I used to share with my mother. I was a soldier then, you know, far, far away. I have almost forgotten where. Suppose we went there. Oh, no, it is forbidden. Suppose we go. We'd be back before we were missed. No one would ever know. She looks at him and smiles and says, You want to. I can see you do. It isn't much to ask of you. Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. yes. Why not? You want to. I can see you do. He says, Come over here. Until you say yes. And so he thinks, well, if we did go, perhaps this time my mother would know me. Why not? Just pay her a call. She could come and live with us. Then I'd really have it all. They're on their way. They're nearly there. A scent he knows hangs in the air. He's gone on ahead to find the frontier. She is a little way behind he calls her. He turns back, then changes his mind. <laughs> the soldier of the frontier is crossed. The devil in scarlet, triumphant at last. He has the fiddle. The soldier has lost. <laughs>
The Devil Has the Last Word in Stravinsky's L'Histoire du Soldat, Soldier's Tale, on texts by the Swiss novelist Charles Ramuz. That's the final work on this concert by Sinfonia San Francisco, conducted by Samuel Chrysler. In a theatrical tour de force, we heard Scott Beach as the narrator and all the other characters in this diabolical soldier's tale. The instrumentalists were Roy Milan, violin, Chris Gilbert, double bass, Gregory Dufford, clarinet, bassoonist Rufus Olivier Jr., trumpet player Glenn Fishthal, trombonist McDowell Kenley, and as the diabolical percussion player Tom Hemphill. A native of Portland, Oregon, Scott Beach has been seen or heard in about 30 movies. He most recently appeared in Stand By Me and has just finished a Francis Ford Coppola film called Tucker. He also worked with George Lucas for many years and played the role of Mr. Gordon in American Graffiti. The voice of Scott Beach is very familiar to Bay Area residents. For the past six years, he's been the host of the all-night show Music Till Dawn on KHHI in San Francisco. Sinfonia San Francisco's conductor and artistic director Samuel Chrysler is involved in many other musical groups around the Bay Area as well. He's music director for the West Bay Opera and also leads the Oakland Youth Orchestra. Before coming to San Francisco, he enjoyed a career as a prominent solo cellist, making extensive tours of North America. He became the youngest principal cellist in a major American orchestra, the Rochester Philharmonic, at the age of 24. And with that performance of Stravinsky's L'Histoire du Soldat, we come to the end of the final program in this series of four broadcast concerts by Sinfonia San Francisco. This performance was recorded for broadcast at Herbst Theater in San Francisco, April 6, 1987. Our program has been a production of 91.5 KUSC, the classical music radio service of the University of Southern California. The audio engineer for Sinfonia San Francisco was Jacques Verdier. KUSC's post-production supervisor was Ted Ancona, with assistance from Ford King. Program notes were written by Kathy Henkel. Our producer is Lucia DeLisa. Special thanks to KUSC's Peter Rutenberg and to Naomi Nimmo of Sinfonia San Francisco. We do hope you've enjoyed this series of concerts by the ensemble and invite you to send your comments. Simply address them to Sinfonia San Francisco, KUSC, Los Angeles, California, 90007. We'd love to hear from you. And that address once again is Sinfonia San Francisco, KUSC, Los Angeles, 90007. I'm Gail Eichenthal. Thanks for listening.